Welcome to a new Node-RED tutorial video. Lately I was working with the user access flow which I sort of like presented or hinted a couple of months ago. I think it's already overdue and that in, in part of that flow or that you know whole concept I needed a part where I can maintain users and that just gave me a very good idea to create an like a generic uh, data maintenance module in Node-RED how you can you know maintain data uh, using this well which is usually called the CRUD model so create read update and delete so basically you can you know create new data you can update you can view the data and also delete so for this user access um, management or you know example i needed a way to create users or at least you know manage users so i thought this is going to be a good time to create one of these crud table for user access so i can create users i can delete them i can modify them like you know change the names or the password or that sort of stuff and i thought i'm just going to build this uh, as a separate video as well so if you're interested in this particular subject it's going to be explained a little bit more in detail in this video and on the user access one, I can just focus on the user access details. So what are we going to talk about today? So first of all, um, we are going to use Node-RED Dashboard 2.0, the UI template node, and in specifically, I'm going to use a vData table in order to show the data and also enhance the vData table to have some controls where we can change values and, um, and in some cases also have some buttons where we can you know, create updates, create new data, and also delete data. And I'm going to go through three uh, uh, specific ex examples. Actually, the first example is something that I already showed in my uh, video on how you create tables or you know different type of tables in Dashboard 2.0. And then um, uh, I enhance that example with, you know, uh, a newer example where you can maintain, let's say, multiple fields and different type of fields. And then the last example is going to be that full CRUD example with the user access, where actually you can also delete and create new data as well. And I try to make these, you know, examples fairly generic. So it should be very easy to change it to a different data model. So if you have a different set of fields, if you have different data, then it should not be a huge amount of change. So some of the coding part of the of my example is generic enough, so you can just easily reuse that for a di different data structure. And when I was uh, working on this, especially the last part, I also ran into some interesting issues. And um, um, by solving those issues, I thought those are going to be interesting, uh, you know, tips and tricks for Node-RED as well. So namely, it's uh, these data tables sometimes they need to be refreshed manually uh, because uh, the you know when you do navigation in dashboard 2.0 and you navigate between different tabs it they don't refresh automatically so there is a piece of code where uh, this happens just to make sure that whenever you navigate to that screen the table is refreshed and is showing the data that it's supposed to show also i was using a um, technique well no it's not really a technique but i wanted to solve the uh, um, the problem of when you select something how i can identify which uh, data you have selected so i came up with this idea how i can internally index records um, and also especially in the last example i'm going to show you how i can just do this temporarily and then um you know i'm deleting that data uh, later on so these indexes so they don't end up in the let's say in the main data structure that you want to store in the context or maybe in a database and also whilst i was doing this i also realized that most cases when you are assigning especially object variables that contain object you are not creating instances but you are just uh, you know linking that object instance to let's say another structure so you have a uh, a variable for an object and then you put it into the payload so if you modify the original variable then whatever you put into the payload that gets changed as well because that's not a new instance of the same object but it's actually the same object that, that is now referenced into the payload and sometimes you don't want to do that so again that was a bit of trick how i can do some you know json magic to uh, create a copy of that object and then assign that to a different variable so these are the topics that i want to talk about and as usual they are going to be jump links and you know sections in this video so if you want a particular topic then you can jump to that uh, in the video 
and also in the video description you will find the download link to all these examples that I have uh, presented here in this video. So before we dive into the details, let me quickly give you the, well, show you the three examples that I'm going to talk about this video. So the first example in this is this very simple, let's say temperature control example. Uh, so that's the one that I already showed uh, maybe about six months or beginning of this year when I was, you know, starting this introductory dashboard 2.0 videos. So this is where, let's say you have... Um, I mean, in this example, I have like three rooms. So you have a room name, you, you see what the current temperature is. And then also you can control what uh, the, let's say the set temperature is or the thermostat temperature is. And this is all stored in a data structure. And then you have to use, you have these very simple controls like this plus and a minus button for each of the um, records. And then you can just change the temperature. And uh, again, it's a very simple example, but that also shows you how you can, you know, create controls within the data table and how you can assign that controls to specific fields. So, you know, how you can pass the data uh, from these buttons when the button is pressed. So, you know, in Node-RED where you need to make the changes. So that's the first example. So the second example is something very similar. I use this, uh, you know, temperature thermostat example, but here you have, uh, you know, more um, things that you can change. So let's say we have, and also I try to use different controls to show you how you can incorporate different controls. So instead of just buttons, we have a, um, a drop down where you can change the, the cooling, sorry, the, um, the heating mode, you have also like an enable, disable, and while this interval is not really specific to, let's say, a thermostat, but I wanted to include some numerical values. And then, um, and then you have button in order to submit the changes. So again, that's a very simple one, but I, at least it's going to give you an idea how you can incorporate multiple controls and then have a, obviously, because now you have multiple fields, you also need, let's say, a button where you submit the changes to the database. So I opted for this example where you have a save changes button for each of the row. So it makes it fairly, I think it makes it fairly intuitive that, you know, you press the button on the corresponding line and that line or that record gets updated. And finally, the last example is this user administration flow. So that's the CRUD example that I was telling uh, or mentioning because, well, as you can see, it has all the different buttons that you would need for a full data maintenance. So you have a new button to create new data. You have edit button to create, uh, to make changes. Obviously, you have this whole view to uh, view the changes or read the data, and you also have delete buttons. So the, sim the functionality is a little bit more advanced than the previous example, because when you select a, um, um, any record, then you are taken to a different screen where you can make changes to each of these values. And then when you go back to the, um, to the screen, it updates and you can also delete a data and you can also create new data. So, and now I have a new data and you no, know, I don't want to say, uh, save the password. So that basically just covers all the four, um, different functions that you would expect when you want to create uh, data maintenance. So that's what we are going to talk about in this video. So let me go back to the first example. So as I said, we have some um, room names, some IDs, there is a set temperature, there is a current temperature, and you have buttons in order to change the set temperature by half a degree up and down. And the flow looks like this. Actually, it is a very simple flow. It only contains that much uh, value or so, uh, flows, uh, sorry, nodes. So first of all, there is a, uh, a an inject node which uh, just sets up the initial data. So again, I'm going to store everything in uh, context variables. Everything is going to get created manually. Um, so obviously you would you want you can modify your flow uh, in order to get this information from a database or some other data sources but again i just wanted to keep it simple for the purpose of this video so you see that uh, for each of these examples we are going to start with an array so the array is going to have um, a list of uh, objects 
and each object would have the same amount, well, the same fields, obviously. So now we have the room name, the ID, there is a target temperature, there is a current temperature. So pretty much the four fields that you can see here. And of course, this comes with some default values. And in order to make the, uh, the flow at a little bit easier, uh, sorry, a little bit uh, more interesting, I created this update, which runs every 10, two seconds, and it just randomly changes the current temperature. And then, as you can see, the, uh, the color of the, this temperature also is dependent on whether it's uh, greater or uh, more or less than the target temperature. Okay. So first the information goes into this uh, function node and the only purpose of this function node is, is to change the values. So now you can see that it basically, so if the uh, topic is update, which is this uh, function, uh, this inject node, then it uh, creates a loop and it goes through each of the current values and then changes that by a random number. It's either, um, um, you know, two degrees up and down. So that's basically the random value. No, one, de one degree up and down, I think. And then it saves the changes and then, yeah, it just returns the data. So what we would get um, out of this change node is, uh, sorry, it's, it's the context data. So it's the, uh, this information, which is also stored in a context, and as you can see, it's an array of object. And then, well, that's what we have seen in the inject node. So in this data table, I created a template for what well, two of the fields that we are going to use, the, the target temperature and the current temperature, because the other two fields are just displaying whatever data is coming in without any special formatting. So you can see that we have a column, which is current temperature and target temperature. So that formats these two, these two texts here, which are aligned to the center. And then we have an, two more templates, which uh, basically format these fields and these fields. And I've already mentioned about this in the, in the tables video. So I'm just going to quickly fly, fly through this. And that's um, the, the current temperature is basically, so that's the item.current. So that's basically just a linear progress bar. So you see linear progress bar and it's tied to the item.current. Uh, so it's always to the current value and there is min and max. And then it has a dynamic color property, which gets the value from the get color function, which is defined here function. And then basically if the current is bigger than the target, then it's red, otherwise it's green. So that makes the, uh, the, this progress bar to appear either in green color or in red color accordingly but that's not really what we are here for now so it's it's uh, it's a target field which shows the target temperature and it prints uh, degree centigrade so that basically this part it which you can see here but then also it also uh, also renders two buttons so you can see that um, i create one um, red button with the icon of plus and a blue button with an icon of minus so here and there and they are going to uh, send a message with the topic plus and the payload is the item or the topic minus and the payload is the item so every time when i press one of these buttons then these messages are sent out and also what an important thing just to make this whole thing works is that if for the whole data tables the items is uh, tied to the message.payload so as i said the message.payload contains an array so then it knows that you know if this is an array uh, all the items sorry the this item is actually going to contain the the actual row so this is how these buttons know that they have to send uh, the payload it contains the, the actual row where they are in. Okay, so if I exit, so if you look at this debug node, so if I click plus, then you can see that it sends the whole uh, item. So the bathroom and the and the ID and the target and the current temperature. So it was 
sorry it was 21.5 and now it's 22 so and then you can see that the topic was plus so from this information i can pretty much tell what uh, to expect and then you can see that uh, in this simple function node as i i just you know have my own logic so if the topic is plus or if the topic is minus then i change the value uh, either by plus po uh, 0.5 or minus 0.5 so, so i change the target value and also uh, please note here that uh, what i do here is um, i get this id field and i just make sure that this id is um, is unique across the my sample data so now I can do, I can check whether this ID that I got in the payload, in the payload.id, it matches um, my source data.id. So that's how I can make sure that I only update the value where I plus, uh, I pressed either the plus or the minus button. And uh, this is where this new thing, which I mentioned in the beginning, how you can create this in text temporary comes into play because you don't necessarily have a unique ID in your data set that you can use to identify the actual record. Because as you see in this, when you, know, you press any of these buttons in these cases, then you only get the selected record. So, it, and unless you have a unique value that you can match on, like in my case, the ID, but I could have used the room name as well. You don't have, you, you don't really know which, but, uh, which item uh, got modified, uh, whether this is the first record or the second record. So you need some information to do that. But here I could use this, I could use this ID. And once the data is changed, then the whole thing just goes back to the beginning and it feeds back to the, uh, uh, to the template node and that's this is why the value changes whenever I press the button oh some of these value uh, sorry some of these lines get swapped over that's why it's creating a confusion for me um, but that's how it works and as I said it's simple but also it is quite simple to implement as you're going to see in some of the other examples they are going to be a uh, somewhat more complicated and let's go to the next example, which I just call the inline editing, because you are making all the changes here without having any additional screens. So here I also have a sample data, which is, I mean, it has um, like, let's say a set of thermostats or a list of thermostats, each have a name, have a mode and enable and a sort of random interval value. So again, I wanted to have an option how you can do like a drop down, a checkbox, and also like a numeric control. <clears throat> So this, um, once the sample data is injected, then it gets stored in the, in the context. So if I do this, you can see the inline here. Yep. And um, yeah, and then it goes into the rest of the flow. So first of all, it goes into this prep data flow, which this is how, this is where this additional, you know, index is getting added. So the reason I did that, because, uh, you know, when you look at the initial data set, it doesn't have anything. I mean, yeah, maybe I could use the, the name because that's unique. So I can use the same approach as the previous example, but let's just said, I, I said, let's just, you know, do something else. And I create this dollar index field. Um, I just use dollar to basically just show that this is more like a technical field as in the, all the other fields. And here in this, um, uh, flow I basically just go through the data set and I just update this index and of course once you have created it it should it doesn't need to run again but I just assume that this is a small data set so it doesn't take a lot of time or computing effort to just re-index it every single time and I also added an edit field which has the the value edit and we are going to see a little bit later on why that is required and next, we are going to pass all this info into a template node, which is going to contain a VData table, just like before. But here I use the same approach what I started using in the, uh, and I mentioned in the previous video, is that I have a separate headers field where I can control what fields I want to show on the UI and in what order and what fields I don't want to show. So um, here, I specify that in the UI, 
so here you see room name mode enabled interval and actions so i want a room name a mode enable interval and action and in, a, in order to have this extra field the action field i re i use this field in the data set as edit because uh, i wasn't really sure if i can you know i needed a field in order to include as a header so i thought i'm just going to create this dummy field maybe there is a more elegant way of doing this but that's how i decided to do in this example so with uh, with this we define all the things that we want to create as headers and how the table is going to look like i find it much easier to use this and make changes here like renaming stuff as opposed to implementing sort of hard coding everything in the um, uh, in here in the template node uh, using you know v templates and some of the other things that i did in the first example so in the template node we are again going to use the v data table and here just for the sake of convenience i also added a search functionality but if you don't need that you can just uh, delete this whole search line and also you can remove this uh, v model search the data table is um, is bind the items are bind to the message.payload and the headers are bind to the message.headers so the use of the items is going to be exactly the same as in the previous example and I mean, I still had to create some template no, templates here, but I needed to create them in order to render the fields, which need to be editors. The I needed to render them as the corresponding editors. So a drop down here, a checkbox here, and a generic input field here. So you can see that uh, for each of them, you create a, and, and you only need to create these templates for the fields that you want to do some editing. So the room name doesn't, you know it just shows the room name so you don't have to do any special coding for that but this is how uh, what i created for the drop down so it's a template which is uh, the slot is the item dot mode so that's the mode and um, it's yeah it is linked to the item and uh, i format it as a combo box which is the the v model is like linked to the item dot mode so that so he is also linked to this uh, er, uh, sorry field in the object and the items are either heating or cooling and you can see that the value is also heating and cooling so by default when you pick some uh, pick something from the combo box uh, that's the that's the value which gets written into the variable in our case the item dot mode and a little bit of formatting density compact and the variant outline so that just creates this as an outline and of course the values are the values and that's the combo box so that basically just renders this and it uh, puts heating and cooling and Whenever it receives the value heating or cooling, it will automatically select that because it, it's that value here, the value of the field matches with the items that is here. So that's fairly convenient. So the next one is the checkbox, which is the enable checkbox. So that is linked to item.enabled. You can see it's either true or false. And it's a checkbox with a model item that's enabled so that again gets automatically formatted based on what the incoming data is so you can see this one is not enabled these two are enabled and finally we have well not finally but we have an um, editor so that's linked to the item.interval and it's a text field model is item.interval density is compact and uh, variant outline and the type is number so for the text field you have a lot of different types that you can do so if you do number then you have these plus minus buttons if you define something as password then it shows the values as stars and uh, you have like dates and times and a couple of other data types that you can do here specify so then the ui editor becomes uh, you know custom for that data type and finally i also needed to render these uh, buttons here the save changes and i created a template for this edit field uh, so again i'm just using this dummy field in order to render these buttons so here i create a button which has a save icon 
and a tonal variant so that just gives this very flat look and whenever it's clicked it sends a message where the topic is save and the payload is the item so again just like you know whatever line it is it sends that line and as we are going to see it sends that line with already the changes that we did here and that's it there is nothing in the script and it just uh, so it just works so let me just go into the debug node again so you can see that let's say i'm changing this one so it's heating i set it to heating and 100 and if i click on save then you can see that it's the kitchen and it's heating the enable this true interval is 100 and you can see the item index is one so this is zero one and two so we know that that's the item index so whenever we want to change we have this information so we know how which item uh, we should go back to in the in the original context data because if i refresh this in line see it was the second one you can see it's already 100 and it's heating so the way i did this is um, i read the value from the context and i check whether the topic is safe you know that in the payload basically i get the in so i pass the entire array with all the fields and all the elements to the uh, v table or the v data table so when uh, the button sends the the actual item it sends that full record as you can see with all the fields with the index and everything so all i needed to do is uh, i pick up this inline which contains all the free items that we have at the moment and i index it to the message.payload.dollarindex and that um, item in the array should now become the message.payload so and then it just updates everything back into the global array and uh, or the flow array and then we have already seen how that is now showing the updated value so again as you see it is very easy to do because this piece of code doesn't really care what's in this data structure whether you have name mode enabled or interval because it just gets uh, or picks up what it 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 got from the uh, from the v data table and it puts it back to the original item so if you start using this flow and you change the fields around you have more fields less fields different names the code is just going to work because it doesn't care of course you have to update the ui template in order to render the uh, the drop downs and the input fields and whatever according to your data but at least you don't have to change this uh, function node so the other thing i did because here in the um, global data structure that you see here uh, which is saved in a context i did not want to include the underscore edit and the sorry the the edit and the dollar index field as you can see even if i refresh this got updated and it oh so this one has the fields but uh, so this one doesn't have the uh, the fields so when you update it it doesn't save the the fields back you don't really need to do that you can just yeah if you don't want these sort of technical fields you can delete them and then you update the flow and then we also send a information out that the uh, the record got updated which is getting displayed by this notification node but that's it and of course because we have changed all the data in the uh, on the screen we don't even need to refresh the screen because uh, you know that screen already shows the data that we have updated and we can change this one to heating and 100 and save it and now if I refresh so heating 100 this one is also heating 100 and you know it just works so now let me go to one of the tricks so the one thing that I noticed uh, sorry is that if I navigate to a you know different screen and if I come back tables so this was not updated all the time and what I noticed that I can create this uh, edit even node um, and that is going to send out a message every time there is a UI event and then one of these UI event is a page view 
So I don't have a debug node on this one, but uh, whenever I navigate to a page, like if I opened uh, open it with a URL, or if I go to a different you know tab and I come back to this tab, well, for that matter, basically if I do navigation on any tabs or anywhere in the in the dashboard, it's going to send some messages. So what I do, what I did in this in this uh, function node is I check whether the message the topic is dollar page view so this is the message that gets sent out every time I do navigation on the uh, dashboard 2.0 and then when it sends out these type of messages it uh, in the payload in the message payload page name it contains the page title which is this one tables so I put this here as a local variable so you can easily change that. So if the topic is page view and it's the page title match, match, matches the, well, the title that I'm monitoring, then return message, otherwise don't do anything. So that basically just fires up this prep data and it updates the table. Because if you don't do that, what I noticed is that if you navigate away to a different page, you come back and your table is going to be empty. So these two nodes make sure that uh, the screen is refreshed every time you you navigate to this page. Just make sure that you know if you're using this for your example, then obviously your um, page is going to have a different uh, title. So just update it here, and that's it. That's the second example. So now let's talk about the third example, which is this user administration, and that's going to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, but I have reused most of the stuff which is here so we can skip all these items so for example you see this UI event also here there is this page uh, detect is exactly the same obviously the page title is different so it says user administration so user administration so that just makes sure that uh, the the uh, the this list is updated and we have the same set of you know headers UI template prep data which we have seen uh, previously okay so here the data is a slightly bit different so it's the data that I use for my access control and you see that the data actually user access so it looks like this so we have an object and it's not a because I'm using this object to store some additional information as well. So it has within the, uh, within the user access, there is a separate user object. And that, that is an array with all the different users. So every user has a name, username, ID, password, and it has a set of pages that the user has access to. So the second user has access to, let's say, two pages. The first user has access to one pages. Again, this is just an example. You should really use a different set of um, data for your example. But the flow starts from here. That just, again, injects a, a set of uh, default values, which is stored in the context, in the flow context. And that's what we are going to use uh, from now on. It's pretty much like the inline as I said, the only difference is that there is a separate object which uh, contains the array. It's not the, the main object. But the rule is the same. So we have a UI event which detects the payload. Then we go into this prep object. We load the value. There is some additional validation for this specific example, but you can delete it from your example. But it is the same thing. So in the previous example, we, used it, uh, we loaded the... Uh, the inline from the flow inline now we uh, load the user access into a variable user access and we also do the same thing so we generate the index we generate this edit and we also create um, uh, that's uh, specific for this page access because uh, here in the users um, oops not this one here in these users, I my users are having access to you know various pages, which is just a, you know um, a list of text in an array. But on the UI, I wanted to have a field which shows the uh, these values separated by comma, so I can just easily display them. And I create all these values here dynamically, so you can see that I just basically concatenate all the values. And I remove the last two spaces because I always plus uh, put a comma 
space at the end so for the last value i don't need a comma space at the end so the, i do splice z zero minus two to remove the last two characters from the string so i create the index the edit and this page text which we are going to use later on and i create the headers so again exactly the same example as before so i have user id id full name uh, username and this page text so that's the the new value that i created and also i have an actions which is the edit field the dummy edit field and on the ui it is going to be very very similar so here in this ui we don't inline any of the fields basically for every single field we just have an edit and a delete button so here for a table i create a template for the item.edit and I create a container and within this container, I just create a simple table because I think that's the only way how you can make these to appear with a little bit of gap and, uh, you know, reasonably aligned is uh, I create a row with two columns and then for each in each column, there is a button. So in the first one, I have an edit button with an edit icon. And when it's pressed, it sends a topic edit with a payload item. So again, the example is, or the, the approach is exactly the same as the save button in the previous example. Now we just have different topics. So one sends the edit topic, the other sends the delete topic, and the payload is always the, the current item or the selected item. And here I have a little bit more code because I created this search and also this new button. So you see that that's in another container, which again has two, um, one row and two columns. The first column is uh, that contains the search field, that's text field. And in the second column, which has the columns one, just to make this really, really small, uh, it just has a button. So again, it has a, it sends the topic new the payload is going to be null because obviously it is not a line item. So I just send, need to send a message that the new button has been pressed. And then it has a text new and a button off. Oh, <laughs> I put the delete, delete icon here. I should look for a different icon here. This shouldn't be MDI delete outline. It should be MDI something else. Anyway, it was copy and paste example, uh, copy and paste mistake from this, from this guy. So that basically just renders all these buttons and this new button and the search uh, on, on the main V data table, as you can see, the, uh, it's exactly the same as the previous example. So the items is the payload and the headers is the message dot headers. And there is no code here whatsoever, which is going to bite me a little bit later. So just bear with me. So here, what happens is, um, you know, very similar to the previous example where we had one save button. So every time I press any of these buttons, they send a topic edit or delete, and they send the current uh, value. So if I do, uh, yeah, I have a user section. So if I click edit, then you see that I get username, username, da 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 da. I have this pages array, but I have the pages text as well. So this is the one that I get generated and I still have the dollar index, uh, my internal indexing that I would be able to use in order to, you know, find the data that I need to update. So it's same stuff. So now I have this big switch node, which says, did I, uh, so the message that arrived, was it an edit message? Was it a delete message or was it a new message? So let's deal with the edit uh, first because that's a little bit complicated. And it is complicated because as you can see, I have created a new tab, which shows the user details, sorry, a new page, which shows the user details. The only extra thing in this is that if I go into the details, I said that the visible, oh, it's on the page that it says user details and its visibility is hidden. So if you go here, you don't see user details. So you can't navigate this to this page using the side navigation, but you can only do this programmatically. 
And that's basically done by this function node, which says, uh, I create this object where the page is the user. So it's an object where with the page attribute, which ex uh, equals to the title of the page. And then you send this to a um, UI control event. So because it receives a page attribute, it knows that it needs to do a navigation. So that's how you change the, uh, the page to a specific page programmatically. And then that page obviously renders all these fields. Uh, and these, that all these fields are created using the standard uh, UI control, uh, sorry, the UI nodes. So uh, text inputs and uh, options and buttons. So everything is standard here. There's no template nodes, nothing really complicated. So you can set up, you know, simple text inputs uh, to edit the full name and uh, so the only thing I have done is I said, if the message arrives on the input, pass it through the output. That is set for all the controls that I've created. And yeah, I haven't really done anything. So this is the same stuff. I just basically just created that this should be the username. Again, pass it through the output. And I think for the password, I said it that it should be a password mode. So it just, uh, you know, stars out the values. Uh, but it's the same. So the edit message comes in and we have seen how the, um, the payload contains all the single, all the, all the fields. So here I pass in the, in the topic, sorry, in the, into the payload, I copy the dollar index value and in the topic, I put the, the text dollar index. And you see that for every single other field that I want to show, I put the field value into the payload and I set the topic to the name of the field that is, that will be edited. So name, so name, username, password, sorry, uh, user ID. So name, username, ID, password, and page text. Username. ID, password, and so on. So that updates these fields whenever I'm navigating. So it gets automatically populated with the selected user. And by the way, the, the pages, it's uh, you know populated with all the options. So you have to do this manually. And again, because the value I'm passing in also contains, so the, the, the value that I pass in is the array, the pages array. So then the, the UI would automatically select the ones that are contained in the array. So I don't have to do anything in order to pre-select these values. So that's also really nice. And I've configured this to allow multiple selection. Yeah, allow multiple selection from the list. And because I pass, uh, because I set all these to pass the initial message to the output. So whenever I click on the edit button, so the original data gets dissected for to each of the fields, but they also pass through to this function node immediately. So basically this function node, um, what you will see here is that it, it starts building up a value in the context, which is called save. And then you see for the save variable, and it's the the attributes is the topic and the value or the name of the field is topic and the value is the payload so basically it just reconstructs the the original data and into the save and of course every time you change any of the values you know when the uh, the value changes either you enter uh, leave focus or you press enter or you there is like a third 300 millisecond delay when you make the changes it would just send new messages and then it would just keep updating this variable in the context with all the different changes that you are making so by the time you decide to update the user this uh, variable would already have all the changes that you typed uh, or you picked in the selection screen so that's good again here, as you can see, because it says 
the topic equals the payload it doesn't really care how the input data look like because it's just going to rebuild everything you just have to make sure that in the uh, here in this change node you are using you are putting the the exact same field names into the topic um, and the corresponding value into the payload so then it can be reconstructed here in this function node so if you have a new field you just create a new set of these values and you don't have to change anything here in the handle changes so that's good and besides these two buttons i also created a back button which sends a mess, uh, message with the topic dollar back and a save button with the dollar save and the back button is very easy because it just does a navigation to user administration and it does the UI uh, control node, same as the, the one that I uh, explained previously. With the, how I navigate into user details, I navigate back to the user list exactly the same way. And I have a function node here, which, uh, sorry, the link node, which links this information back to here. And this is just to refresh the, the original. So if I do this, it basically just refreshes this screen. I don't think it's necessarily required, but I thought it's a good idea just to refresh it, just to be sure. Okay, so what happens when you click on update user? So when you click on update user, when your data is, uh, is coming with, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not really using that part of the function, it's not required. But then if you click save, then if the message topic equals dollar save, which is defined here then um, yeah I update the node context and then as you can see here oh no no so I update the user access dot users so again it's the sub attributes or sub object with the save dot dollar index so again if you remember this has the dollar index because it comes through here so that's getting built into this um, internal variable as well or internal object and that equals I mean normally in the previous examples that I said that this equals to message dot payload or in this case it would be the the object save which is getting constructed locally or internally but here I've, I've done this trick so this is uh, this is required because um, if I just say user access dot users uh, with the you know save dot index equals save that I actually not copy the the content of this save variable into this guy but actually it's get referenced so here when i'm making changes to the save object that would automatically update this user access so the only way to to make a copy of this object with all of its contents is that i um, so that's the object I use the JSON to string JSON to stringify to convert this object into a JSON, and then using the JSON to parse, I recom reconvert it back to an object. So it, at the end, this expression has the exact same value as the original save attribute, but it's going to be like a new variable, a copy of this original variable. So later on, if I make any changes to either this index or the user access, I can I can do it and it's not going to have impact on the save or vice versa. So that was the main reason I did that. Because here, again, I, delete, I deleted the don't index variable because I didn't want this user access, which you can see here. I didn't want this to contain all these technical fields either. So I don't have you know dollar user here sorry dollar index field here and i update the user access and i return that the user details got updated which just updates this notification this piece doesn't do a navigation but i think it could be possible to link it so you have to click on the save button and then you have to go to the click on the return button in order to 
go back to the um, to the screen uh, to the to the user administration screen. So let's say if I click here, then we can see that. Oops. So the copy of this is getting rebuilt here with the index and everything. And if I make changes, five, 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 five. So now it has the changes five, 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 five. And if I do update, then my user is getting updated. So, oh, sorry, user access, refresh this. User access, users, and it's the first one. And it, you see 5555, and it doesn't have the dollar index field anymore because it was a technical field. So I didn't want to include in the main object, which I store in the context or in the file system. So this is all good. And then I just hit the back navigation and uh, and now this one gets refreshed. Oh, this is why I needed this additional because you might hit the back button after you did the update. So I just wanted to make sure that this screen gets refreshed here. Uh, it was complicated, but it was um, it did worth at the end. And also one more trick that I hated to do. I want I needed to update, uh, sorry, include this uh, change node with a message dot top uh, where I cre uh, sorry clear the message dot topic. Because what happens is that this message comes along with, let's say, the topic here was either, let's say, delete or edit or new. And then it goes through this node, it goes through this node, and then none of these nodes edit the topic. And then this, what this uh, um, template node does is that the, when the message arrives, then of course it will update, but the same message also goes through this node immediately. Ah, uh, I could have, maybe I could have disabled this one, but then it would just creating a loop because here, um, so now because I create, uh, sorry, and now because I clear the topic, uh, this, the, even if the message goes through, it's going to stop here because the topic is neither edit, delete or new. But previously it was either edit, delete or new. So it was just creating a big loop and it was just like, like I created, I clicked on delete on one of the items and it would just delete everything. So again, keep this in mind in order to uh, well, either use something like this to delete the, uh, imp uh, like clear the input data from any uh, unnecessary fields or values or just make sure that all your nodes you are using this function um, just make sure that you're using this accordingly so for so either don't pass the input message through well in this case but in this case I wanted to specifically pass the input message through because I wanted to use the initial values and also going back to what I said about the save value. So here when I prep the data and I take the value from the user access and I take it from the users and I initially I was putting this into the payload but here I do all these additional things to the payload. I create these, all these technical fields which I don't need in the original data structure but I need it in the table in order to contain these temporary values, the, the extra values that I want to display on the screen. So here, if I just do message.payload e e uh, equals user access that users, then all of a sudden my object in the uh, context would get updated with all these fields, because as I said, it's a reference, not a copy of the value. But with this uh, JSON parse, JSON stringify, I create a copy and pass that into the uh, the payload. So at this point, I mean, from this point onwards, from line seven onwards, the the value of the payload and the, the original value of the user access dot users is completely different. So I can make changes to one and it would just not affect the other. Cool. So that was the, uh, edit quite a complicated one but um yeah and of course you would want to make changes to these to re make sure that it reflects your data structure 
Uh, let me just cover delete because I think that's a little bit easier. So if you create, if you click on delete on any of those buttons, you get a confirmation whether you want to delete. And um, here I just wanted to be a little bit lazy and I used the uh, the notification node. I could have used also like a UI template node with a with a nice confirmation pop up. I've uh, already explained that in my dialogue videos but I just created a notification because it has a dismissal. So you can have two buttons here. One is a dismissal and a confirmation button. So the dismissal button is no, the confirmation button is yes. So, and I um, uh, zeroed out the timeout. So it, the, the message is not going to timeout. It's going to say, stay on the screen until you press one of the buttons. So here I, in this um, change node, I specify what the message should be. So are you sure you want to delete the user? Are you sure you want to delete the user? And the payload which contains the user that I want to delete, I save it in the message.selected. So I can just reuse it later on after the dialogue. So let's just save these changes. So it goes into the dialogue. So, oops, yeah. This refresh, uh, refresh the data. Yeah. So, uh, da, 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 da. and if the user pressed the delete button, then I again get the user access from the context. And I say that the index is the message.selected.index. So we save this in the selected. And the from this user access dot users, I just splice out this index with one, so that single item, and I update the flow, and that's it. And then it goes back back to the front in order to update the initial um, initial list. So again, very easy, very easy to do. And last, let's do the new. So when the new button is pressed, so the topic is new, then it goes into this function node. And I, I created this very easy way of creating new data, because obviously if you want to do it nice, then what you would do is you would show a, uh, like an empty input value, like an empty form and let the user to enter all the values. And then that should handle um, the fact that you are not updating an existing uh, record like you do with edit, but you are. You need to create a new record. But I've done a shortcut by actually creating a dummy value. So as you can see, I create a new user. So I just pre-populate the ID, the name, the user ID, and a password with some with some dummy values. Because and I also add this uh, to the user uh, to the user list. So you can see user access that user I push this new user in. So that is getting stored in the database at the, uh, so it gets added to this database and it's updated in the flow variable. And I also add the index and some of the other fields that I need and I put it into the payload. So now the payload contains this new value that I just created and it has all the fields that the, the flow would get when you press the edit button. So as you can see that the output of these is sent to the same set of functions as, uh, sorry, the same set of uh, nodes as the, you know, the edit message is sent to. So it's sent to here in order to do the page navigation and then it's sent to all the different fields. So this is why when I press new, you see new user A, new, da, 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 so everything is filled in. So fourth user, let's say 444, and if I update and I go back, then you see the fourth user here. Uh, the third user got deleted because I was just pressing around with some reinitializing the values, so don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, so well, actually this is the third user now. So this is, so I did this trick to make this function node um, oblivion to the fact that it's either editing a user or creating a new user because in this scenario creating a new user is just like editing a user but that user just got created uh, like a split second before but at least I don't have to worry about these scenarios here 
the new user just get created and I pass the edit screen pass this new user to the edit screen immediately. So when you click on save changes then it's uh, well then it gets uh, the new user new user gets updated. The only drawback here is that if you decide to go back to the user list this new guy is, is here but then you can just delete it and he's gone. So that's it. And with this, we got to the end of the third example. Okay, so just to recap what we talked about in this, uh, let's say tutorial, but this more like an, like an example and the, uh, and the case study. So we learned how we can use the table, the VData table in Dashboard 2.0 to uh, create a view of some any generating data and how we can also include controls in order to change that data or manipulate the data. And we have looked at three different examples, which you know vary in complexity, depending on whether you want some simple data changes or you want multiple data changes, or you want the full data maintenance with creation and deletion as well. And we have also mentioned a couple of uh, tips and tricks, uh, which is related to, I would say probably dashboard 2.0 things. So how you can uh, refresh the data on demand when navigating in dashboard 2.0, how you can create temporary data which uh, helps you know record identification so how you're passing these information through uh, various uh, dashboard 2.0 nodes and uh, how, and also within this code we also looked at how you can make this whole flow very generic so it's not specifically related to one set of uh, to a specific data like you know specific set of fields but it's more data agnostic so it would be easier for you to reuse that in the, your scenario so i think that would be all for today as usual you will find a download link to the examples in the video description below but uh, that should be all for this video. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next one.